Not sure you're getting all the speed from your network switches or devices? Do you want a budget-friendly network speed test tool? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using a Raspberry Pi as a network speed test tool. And trust me, once you have this, you're going to want to keep it. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button. Thumbs up. Now here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's to use your Raspberry Pi as a network speed test tool. And trust me, once you've done this, you're going to want to keep it. I'm going to talk about why you should test both ways, and that's in and out. We'll go over the required items, then we'll talk about the outbound speed test, and then we'll show you the local one that I think you're really going to like. Now, running a network speed test is going to be something that's very handy to have because that's going to be an easy way for you to potentially see if there's a problem on the network that's going to be, well, I won't say easily correctable, but you won't have to pull out the protocol analyzer or Wireshark to start to look for that kind of thing. And I've had sometimes had to do that, but it's important to test both inbound and outbound. And when I say inbound and outbound, I'm talking from a particular port on the switch because it could be a port on the switch. It may be the entire switch, but this is where having the speed test will help you get the problem isolated and hopefully be a fairly quick and, and simple fix. Well, the first thing you're gonna need is a Raspberry Pi. And I would suggest the Raspberry Pi 4. If you've got a 3B laying around that's extra, then by all means, go ahead and use that one. There will be a few other pieces to the Pi. There's gonna be two different, sorry, three different software components. At some point during the video, I'll show you a fourth one, but I'm not going to tell you where. I, I, I want to see how the others help you, but I think the all said and done, you're going to like the options put before us. You should be able to get by on a 16 gigabyte SD card or micro SD card. Certainly, if you've got a 32, can't hurt. You know, if you don't have the bigger one, then you should be able to get this to work on a 16 and probably even an 8. Bottom line is use what you got before you have to go out and buy something. The first thing we've got to do is get an SD card set up. And this is one that I'm going to reserve. And if you've seen my other video, and I will should be pointing to it right about here, about how to back these up. Because once you've got this one created, even if you don't use it a lot or you need to reuse the SD card, make a, a backup copy of this one so that you can quickly roll it out if you need to. So let's go ahead and we will plug that in. See, it's already recognized it. We will go with the Raspberry Pi image from January 2021. Okay, I've got the micro SD card in there. We're powering it up now. It's already gone through one boot sequence and that got the card resized. So now when we come up here, it should be just another few seconds. Then we'll be able to go ahead and start applying the updates. And if you get a message about can't resolve name or it's having some sort of network problems, but at this point you should have activity lights and a network speed light up on the Raspberry Pi. If you don't, you need to go look at your network cable or where it's connected into. Okay, so we'll get logged in here. And then we will do sudo apt get update. If I can type right. Okay, we've got that done. So now we'll do sudo apt get upgrade and make sure you put the dash y on the end because that will save you a couple of keystrokes in the process of getting everything updated. Well, now we've got all the updates applied. So let's find out what our active address is because I'm going to switch over to an SSH session. And I forgot to do that. The command, if you put a, an SSH, a file, just a text file labeled SSH, then that will tell you what you need to do. So we can just do an ifconfig 
Okay, so 10.0.1.234. But more importantly, since I forgot to do that, then we're going to go into Raspy Config and we'll do System Options, Host Name. I'm not going to worry about at this point. And we will do SSH. Yes, we're going to enable it. SSH is enabled. We will exit there and just make sure I've got my address written down correctly. You can always go into your internet router and get this of 10.0.1.234. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we'll do a pseudo reboot and then I will switch over here. Once I move my keyboard back over, put a USB switch in place to where that's not a problem. And what did I not hit? I didn't hit the button to move it back over. 1.234. And we will go set the font size to something that's readable by humans. And by now we should have a session just about up. Okay, there we go. It sees it. So we'll log in as Pi. All right. So now at this point, what we will do is we're going to get the first of our outbound speed tests up in place. So we'll do a sudo apt install speed test dash CLI. Okay, and as you can see, it's ready to go. So to get this to work, all you do is just type speed test. And it's gonna go out and pick something on its own. And it's you're gonna be as chatty as like the GUI one would be. Okay, obviously I've got something using part of my network connection. So this is something that you're best to do this when your network is fairly quiet. So if we want to cut down a little bit of the chattiness, we can do speed test. Simple. And that will cut down some of the chattiness on the screen to where you can get just the basic information you're looking for. Although if you are wanting to know like what side it's testing against, then you'll want to do the first option that we selected. So it came back, just it was a, the a pregnant pause. Now, if you want to select a specific server, then what you can do is do a speed test space dash dash list that will give you a list of servers, and then you can do speed test dash dash server space and the server ID from that first list. So your speed test list will look something like that. So your server ID is going to be those numbers right there on the left hand side. And you can see there's a varying distance. And if we scroll up here a little bit, it gives, doesn't give you a massive listing, but it, it, it does give you some options to test with because not all servers will respond back with the same results. Now I'm going to show you another tool you can run from the Raspberry Pi. And this one's got a little bit of a long string, so I had to go bring up my notes so we can get this one moved over. And that will pull the whole file down. It's just a matter of how, if it's in a repository or not. If we just do an install, okay, that didn't take long, so now we'll just type fast. So that was a pretty short install and it's going out testing us against a specific host system. So we'll just see what it's showing us. Okay. So it just shows you the basic, the basic speed. So it's a, it's an outbound speed test, but it's at least, you know, it gives you kind of an idea of what you're looking at. This part is an, is a local test and we're going to use something called Docker. If you've seen some of my other videos, you kind of know what you're getting ready to deal with here. If you've not heard of Docker before, it's a way you can run multiple containers or apps if that's how you can uh, want to deal with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so that we've got Docker running so we can have multiple tests available on one Raspberry Pi. So let's switch over here. So it's going to take it up a few minutes, but the other way is you need to be familiar with the command line because it can 
get a little overwhelming if you're not used to working in the command line. So this is something that it just makes it a little bit easier for you. Okay, you can see it just completed. It took a little while, but uh, I've got several things running on the network right now, so that would explain it. So what we want to do is since we're logging in as user pi, we want to make sure that it's in the security group so that Docker knows that it can be used for login. Now we're going to set up something called Portainer, and Portainer is a, is a graphical way of dealing with the Raspberry Pi when you're running Docker. Trust me, it makes it a lot easier. So we'll get that installed. And if you're not familiar with seeing Docker, basically in this kind of a process with the instructions we've given it, this is going to be pretty straightforward. And then if you, when you get really comfortable with it, there is a Docker container called Watchtower that can help keep a lot of things updated automatically. Not a big deal, but that's something that you can look at when you're ready to move to that particular process. Okay, so we've got that done. So now we've got to get Portainer specified. And it's going to come up on port 9000. And this is the easiest way to just let it go that way. You can do all sorts of port manipulation, but don't worry about that just yet. You can deal with that when you're ready to go. And then Okay, it's going to be running right along here. So it shouldn't take too long. All right, so now that appears to be all ready to go. So let's double check our address again. All right, so this is going to be 10.0.1.234. Now I'm going to explain want to explain something to you because of the way we set up the speed test container it's going to take port 80 and it's going to be redirecting to 8080 internally so that's going to make it a little bit easier for you so we'll just be able to go to web browser here And voila, you can't make it any easier than that. So it's not going to be a fair test because I've got my Intel NUC and the Raspberry Pi on the same switch. Now, don't worry if you don't get full capacity. This is where you've got to get a feel for what's normal for a situation. From the reading I've done, now you notice we're getting almost full upload speed. There appears to be something in the Raspberry Pi 3.0 USB hardware that appears to explain some of this. But as long as you're getting a, a pretty high setting, then based on the switch. Now, if you're this is a gig switch I'm on. If you're doing something, let's say a 10100, then obviously the numbers will be a little bit lower. But at least it gives you an idea. And this is where testing over multiple ports is good. If you want to see how it's working over wireless, then go into Raspberry Config, turn up wireless, unplug your ethernet. You probably will have to reboot the Raspberry Pi because I don't know how well Docker may respond to having the interface change that it's using. But that's, that's some experimentation you can do down the road. Well, thanks to everybody who's stay with the video until this point in the process because now I'm going to tell you about another tool because I wanted to make sure I covered did a reasonable job at covering the different options available. If you've been in networking at all or been around someone has you may have heard of something called iPerf and this is a two-step process. We'll first have to install it on the Raspberry Pi and bring up the iPerf server so that we have something to test from the client. So what we'll do is we'll switch over here to our trusty Intel NUC. We'll copy the line here. 
where we're going to install iperf. Okay, that didn't take long. Now what we've got to do is actually bring up the iperf server. So what we will do is do iperf, if I could spell iperf, dash s. Okay, now this is listening. So now we'll switch over to the desktop. And then we will go, we'll change the client mode address 10.0.1.234. And if this works right, and it started the process. Now the Raspberry Pi is not showing it, but we are testing. Well, now you've seen not one, not two, not three, but four tools. Now, you may have to do a little bit of tweaking with iPerf because it can be a little bit on the touchy side and it may not like working or right in being in conjunction with Docker. But depending on how which way you want to go, iPerf alone is certainly an option because it can be tested both ways. And the other three options I've shown you are certainly tools that at least it gives you a starting point on troubleshooting why the network is going to be a little bit slow. It could be a network board. It could be the entire switch. You might have extra traffic out there that if you run this at different times and you get wildly different results, that's a good indication that there's something else that you may have to dig just a little bit deeper. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.